Creating an income generating property out of your primary residence. Hey guys, this is Val Lemoyne, CEO of the Real Estate Made Easy Group, powered by Keller Williams. Today, we're gonna talk about how to use your house to not have to pay a mortgage. Basically, live there for free. How would you do that? My wife and I bought this house and we finished the basement out so that we could create an Airbnb. And the Airbnb not only covers our mortgage, but it more than covers our mortgage. That means that we get to live here for free. So follow me, let's go check it out. So as soon as you walk in, this is a two bedroom Airbnb, which normally is supposed to be a one bedroom and I'll show you how I converted it into a two bedroom. But none of this was here. So there's a wall that actually creates another room on the other side of this basement right here. And then we added all of these cabinets and butcher block. We've got a sink, a microwave oven, fridge of course. Then you come over here this way, you've got your living room. This is a couch that doubles as a king size bed. The top part folds over and uh, it is super, super comfortable. So we, we're gonna come this way and check out the bathroom. So this is the bathroom. This is ready to go. It's been cleaned and ready for the next guests. We've got a nice shower here. And then here we've got our second bedroom, counting the king size bed as the first one. And it's got bunk beds, which is nice if you've got kids. And then last but not least, we've got the laundry room right here. So this is super creative and it takes a little bit more of an investment on the front end because the to build out the whole basement was about $18,000. Um, we did have a bathroom down here already, which uh, saved us some money. And uh, and now this little Airbnb pays for the mortgage of the house. And so that's a great thing to help offset the cost our, of our living expenses. We're also in a really good school district. This is the, the Walton High School District. And, uh, and it works out great for us. We're at about a 78% occupancy rate here, which is not bad for a basement apartment. We used to have this rented out long term. And then when I did the math on it, I realized that it not only does it make more sense to do it as an Airbnb as opposed to a long-term rental because it's gonna generate more income. But this way, we also, 22% of the time, there's nobody in the unit like right now. So it's a great real estate ninja hack to help supplement your income, offset your mortgage, and this is the type of creativeness that I provide to my clients. To get started in Airbnb is free. Airbnb does not charge you a flat rate to join them. So that means that there's a very low barrier of entry. And the reason is they want you to provide as many Airbnb options to them so that they can in turn provide those to their guests. The way that Airbnb makes their money is mostly from fees that are paid by the guest. So usually they charge the owner 3% of the nightly rate. Let's say that for example, the owner wants $100 a night for their Airbnb. Well, you would give them $3 out of that 100 every night. After that, they would market the property for $118 per night. So it's about 18% that they charge the consumer. Airbnb is going to make 21%, but the landlord is only paying 3%. So it's a win-win for, for all parties. One of the things that Airbnb does put a lot of emphasis on is grading that you get from the guests. So if you don't, if you fall below 4.3 stars, then Airbnb is actually going to penalize you by not letting you show up in the top results of the search. 
So if you have a certain amount of guests stay with you and you are above 4.7 stars, you're now a super host. So you get a, to keep a bigger piece of the pie. They also give you uh, discounts when you go stay in other Airbnbs for yourself. And they do that to incentivize you to go out of your way to really provide a great experience for the guests. So there are other competitors and other avenues to Airbnb. The biggest one is VRBO. That one is very, very similar to Airbnb. It costs a little bit less of, of a fee and they actually have really cool websites out there where you can use that platform to tie Airbnb and VRBO together. The hardest part is actually finding a cleaner because every time the guest leaves, you want to have the house cleaned, of course, so that it's ready for the next guest. And usually that takes over an hour because as soon as the cleaner comes in, they have to take all the sheets off, the pillowcases, the covers and everything, throw those in the wash and then dry them. So it takes about an hour and a half from start to finish. So of course you've got multiple sets of sheets and blankets so that you can start remaking the beds and etc and everything. And then you've got a vacuum, mop, make sure the dishes are properly cleaned, clean and sanitize the bathroom and the kitchen. But all of that is not going to take an hour and a half. I mean, depending on the size of the house, but for this particular example, it wouldn't take an hour and a half. So that's one of the most challenging parts is finding a person to come and clean in between all the guests. So if you have any questions, guys, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be happy to help you brainstorm and point you in the right direction or answer any questions that you may have. This is Val Lemoyne signing off. Thank you.